Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to my workshop. With me, I have a vintage, I would imagine 1960s era BWD um, signal generator. It's actually a sine wave and square wave signal generator. Now, I've got a thing for vintage test equipment. I just love the look of it. I honestly don't know very much about it at all. This video, we're going to have a look at this see if we can maybe check it out, restore it, insert whatever word you like here. But I picked it up from a deceased estate. I have no idea if it works. I think I would like to use it. And let me explain that a little bit in a minute. This will be a voyage of discovery. Uh, and hopefully we nut it out as we go along. Now, let me explain a little bit about vintage electronics. A few of you know I like to do repairs on electronics. I'm not trained. It's only ever been a hobby. Some of my knowledge is okay. There's probably big gaps in basic stuff. And recently I bought myself a brand new oscilloscope. Now, do I know how to use it? No. Have I ever used an oscilloscope? No, quite frankly. Um, I've obviously got a lot of learning to do, but I like doing that as I go. I'm one of these people that's happy just to jump in and make it up and work it out as I go along. Uh, if you guys have any input, please comment. I know some of you will know a lot more about electronics than I do, so I welcome any input. Uh, others who don't know much and are interested, you might actually enjoy learning with me. I'll show you some of the vintage test equipment I've got here that I would like to either restore or perhaps even use down the track before we get into this signal generator. Here's an older oscilloscope. Again, it's a BWD. I think they're Australian made. So it's a big long unit, it's got the cathode ray tube in it, the other one's a digital one. I would love to get that going one day. There's just something about vintage test equipment that I really enjoy. And out in the other shed, I have another vintage oscilloscope, even older. This would probably date back to the 40s. Uh, really cool piece of kit. It's a Philips one. I would love to get that fired up again one day, although it probably won't be that useful as far as diagnostics go. And up here I also have a an HF oscillator. There's a regulated power supply there that's possibly homemade. I'll check that out one day as well. And there's all sorts of other gear I pick up in my travels. These are all homemade. They come from the same place. So uh, we'll be able to test them and repair stuff the more I learn about electronics. Okay guys, back to this signal generator or sine and square wave generator. I'm going to plug it in first and see what happens. Hopefully we don't have a cloud of smoke or flames. I've got the power plugged into my isolation transformer. So let's turn that on. We have power there. I gather this has got an on off switch. AC on. We have life. I can hear a faint hum. Now I'm I'm pretty sure this has got valves in it. I haven't looked in it really, so obviously it's going to take a while to warm up. And I guess we actually need to work out how to use my oscilloscope to, to read a signal out of it to see if it's actually working. Um, even though now the signal range or the frequency range from it, from what I could work out, the black setting is the lower setting. We can go from two, uh, 20 cycles, which is 20 hertz right up to 220 hertz. And then on the red uh, switch, we've got from the 200 hertz all the way up to one megahertz. So I gather that's a pretty good range and hopefully that sort of range will allow me to use this for testing gear later on when I actually know how to use it. But the, the basic understanding I've got is that you generate a signal at a set frequency through this thing. You can then input the signal into a radio, an amplifier, anything you're checking and use the oscilloscope to look at the signal through the circuit to see if the circuit's actually doing what it's supposed to do or where the signal breaks down. So that's that's my basic understanding of it. Hopefully I'm on the right track there. I've just got to really work out how to operate the equipment and get familiar with it, particularly the oscilloscope over there. There's so many knobs and buttons and dials that um, I'll probably have to read the instructions. All right, I can smell this. It's, it's warming up. There's obviously a good layer of dust over the valves. It's got that wonderful old valve um, smell, which is probably just the dust burning. So we don't have any nasty noises. We don't have any smoke. That's a good thing. 
but I probably won't be able to get anything out of this until I work out how to operate my oscilloscope to see if this is even producing a signal. Right, so I decided to have a little bit of a play with this, and given that the first part of the, or the lower frequencies that this signal generator produces are in the audio range, I thought, what happens if I just hook a speaker up to it? Can we get a noise out of it? The speaker doesn't matter if I blow it up, it's only a cheapie. But I've turned it on, and if I increase the level, which I assume is like a volume, I can then hear a frequency. I'm not sure if you can hear that. So that appears to be working quite well. It's very quiet, but obviously it hasn't got an amplifier in, in it. But I can get the noise through the speaker. So this is the audio range. The top part of the frequencies is in the, the RF range, which I think is radio frequency, which we can't hear. But this gives me hope that the actual thing is in good working order. I'm still going to now... I'll try and hook up my oscilloscope and see what sort of waveforms it generates, if I can work out how to operate it. So I'll have a bit of a muck around and I'll get back to you shortly, hopefully with some vision on the new oscilloscope. And then it seems that it's working. If it looks like it's working okay or the waveform's okay, I'm still going to pull the thing apart because it's going to need new capacitors, I'm sure, being this old. And if I'm going to keep it and use it, I want it to be reliable. I did see a video where someone was checking out an old signal generator and he managed to get the waveform on his oscilloscope, but it was very distorted. So I'm going to have a look at this. I'll have a play first. I'll get back to you soon. Okay, so I've been having a play with my little uh, oscilloscope. It's pretty straightforward, actually. I read through the booklet. Um, I do fear, though, that I'll probably end up using this like I use my microwave and you only just use the, ba use the basic reheating functions and you never use any of the special programs but I think I'll probably study some YouTube videos on getting the most out of your oscilloscope I'm sure there's people doing that it seems it's pretty simple in that you've got one uh, two channels one and two uh, just basically adjustments for vertical adjustment and it's a horizontal adjustment somewhere oh that's vertical oh that alters the amplitude and then there's one for horizontal over here. And that's just a, a generated square wave, like a test square wave. It's one kilohertz, uh, which is provided to calibrate the probe, which I've done. So it's pretty straightforward. The basics, uh, the thing that makes it really easy, is it's got an auto function. So you can hook up whatever you like, just press the auto, and it senses all the right settings to display your signal. So that's going to make it a lot easier. It's certainly at least for me to use the thing um, from now and then I'll learn all about the finer details uh, as I go along. So we've got the signal generator here again. I've got the output terminals here which I'll just hook up the probe to and we will press auto and see what it comes up with. So really I'm letting the machines do all the work and I'm just hooking up the wires. And... I think I'll just turn it on and see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't blow up my oscilloscope. Now it's going to take a while to warm up. So we'll give it a few uh, seconds and then we'll press the auto button and see if we get any sort of signal. Uh, the level set very low. Oh look, we've got a signal happening. I'll press auto and see what it tells us. There we go. So we've got a signal... It looks a little bit unstable. It looks it looks very unstable. Um, it's a sine wave. Oh, there we go. It's probably going to stabilise as it warms up. That could well indicate that capacitors are dodgy in this. Uh, and we should be able to... Tell us the frequency is 4.25 kilohertz, give or take. It's fluctuating a bit. So say 4.2. And we're set to 2 kilohertz scale. 4.2. Oh, that's pretty close. If I'm reading that rightly, I think that's 4.25 up there. Oh, what's going on with our scope? It's all over the shop. So I've certainly got issues there. Most likely capacitors. Maybe it's got a dodgy valve. Um, it looks pretty clean. I don't think it should have any corrosion issues. Let's try a different frequency. 
Uh, and if we move this, what does it do? Now we've gone off screen. We can bring it back down with our vertical. Ah, our position, vertical position. Brings it back down. Now that's a pretty odd looking sine wave. Let's change the frequency again. So it's certainly changing the frequency. I can see the kilohertz going up to about 8.3 there, which is a little bit off. We're on 7.75. So it's certainly going to need some work. It probably hasn't been used for a long, long time. Let's go to a different scale. Whoa, there we go. So at least it does work. It's generating a signal. It's just rather unstable. Uh, let's press auto on that and see if it comes up with a better waveform for us to look at. And there's, uh, it's jumping everywhere. There's looks like there's interference. Something might be breaking down. I think I've seen enough. I know the thing works, but it certainly needs some attention. I don't want to stress out my oscilloscope. I don't think this will stress it, but um, it's certainly having trouble stabilizing the signal. 76 kilohertz. Oh, it's going all over the place. So it's having real issues there. Um, and I don't even know how to get onto the larger scale. This button, this switch doesn't seem to work. It's really tight. And I don't want to force it because I'll break something. Um, and I don't even know what the attenuator does here. No, it changes the strength of the signal. Look at the interference we've got on there. All right. I've, I've actually enjoyed my little play with the oscilloscope this morning, but I'll put it away for now. I think we need to dismantle the signal generator and look at replacing the capacitors at a bare minimum. So we'll do that next. I think one thing I am quite good at is pulling things apart. So let's get into this. Uh, I don't know that they hold the case together. What do we go? Oh, we'll probably take the feet off. I think that might hold the bottom cover on. Okay, does that get us anywhere? Maybe not. Oh, there we go. Yep. So it looks, oh, it looks nice and clean inside. And nice and vintage. So some big long shafts on these switches. Lots of little resistors. There's a couple of electrolytic capacitors we'll probably have to replace. In fact, I think I'll recap the whole thing just for a future... Um, future performance and I'm not going to sell this thing I'm going to keep it if it's going to be handy and it looks like it will be okay can't see much else under there there is an adjustment there if we need to um, calibrate something down the track now since we've just had it on I want to make sure these capacitors aren't holding a charge so we'll earth those out to the chassis Okay, that should be right. Now, how do we get the rest of the case off? Maybe the whole top slips off. Oh, there's a handle here. Oh, the screws through the handle. I guess they hold it on. Now, is that going to come off? It looks like it should. Oh, yeah. What a great case design. I like that. Whoa, it's not so clean in the top. It's very dusty. I mean, the problem with having a case that's vented on the top is that it lets all the dust through. And that needs a fairly substantial clean out. As you can see, we do have some valves. So we have a large capacitor there, another one there. Is that a capacitor? I think it is. It might be a multi-stage capacitor. Um, the dial light we know, or the indicator light works because we had a red light. The transformer would be working because the thing was generating a, a varied frequencies. So I'd assume the valves are quite okay as well. We might test them though on our valve tester. So there's not enormous amounts in here. I think we'll 
I'm not sure what that light globe's for. I mean, it looks like a light globe. It doesn't look like a valve. I'm sure it's just a light globe, but I didn't see it light up. And why would you want to light up in here? I don't know. Um, I can certainly pull the valves out and test those. We'll give the chassis perhaps a blow off with the air compressor. And I'll need to short these two capacitors out. And we'll have to give these, well, I don't know about testing them or just replacing them. And what are we going to do with this one? It looks like it's three capacitors in one can. So I can replace them with modern separate capacitors, I guess. I'll have to look into that. So I've given the unit a good blowout with the air compressor. It's cleaned up fairly well. Um, certainly it's still got a layer of dust over things, but a lot of the fluff and dust blew out of it pretty easily. Uh, I'm going to test the valves next, but what I'm going to do is I'll, I'm probably going to finish this up and call this part one. Uh, rather than have one big, long, massive restoration video, we'll break it down to two or three parts. Um, I did clean up some of the parts just to be able to read the values with... Uh, I actually wiped a bit of IPA, isopropyl alcohol, over the top of that resistor. And be warned, it actually seemed to start to dissolve the stripes, which is the colour code system, to tell me what value it is. Now, it's, it hasn't damaged it beyond reading. It's only really the top section, but I didn't realise that you could dissolve the stripes on resistors. Anyway, apart from that, I've cleaned it up. I'm satisfied that I'm going to try and restore it. So this video is now a restoration. We, I'll make a note of all the values of the capacitors and I'll order some and I'll have to, obviously, I want to get some good quality ones, not just some cheap Chinese ones out of my uh, bulk set that I bought. Besides, I don't think there are the right values anyway. So I'll order some good capacitors for it. Uh, in the next episode, we will swap those over. I'm going to take a lot of photos of how it all connects up so that I don't muck up the wiring. Um, I might, I could probably just test a few resistors, uh, seeing so it's not an overly complicated circuit, but they should be all fine. I did notice that the, remember I said this red switch here wouldn't turn? Well, that shaft goes right through. There's the main switch there, and the shaft goes right through to the switch at the back, and it appears to be seized up. It won't turn at all. So I might spray a little bit of uh, deoxid in there and maybe it'll lube it enough to free it up. Uh, I don't want to have to try and pull it out because there's lots of little resistors soldered in there. Anyway, we'll finish up this episode now and we will continue with part two and we'll replace the capacitors. We'll check the valves and we'll hopefully put the thing back together and run it through its paces on the oscilloscope again and see if we've improved it. So thanks for following along, guys. It's a restoration for beginners by a beginner. Uh, hopefully we all learn something. So I'll order some parts and I'll see you soon with part two. I'll link that underneath once I've done it. For those of you that watch my videos the day they come out, it might take a while to get back to this. I've got a few other things going on too. But we'll get this fixed eventually and hopefully it's really useful in the workshop. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.